So welcome to the second video of section 5.3 on elementary matrices. In this video, we're going to state proposition 5.3.2. We're going to prove it, and then we're going to use this to, in an example, to find the inverse of an elementary matrix. So let's start with the proof. Actually, let's start with reading the statement together. Uh, the statement says, an elementary matrix is invertible, and its inverse is also an elementary matrix. In other words, the inverse is also a matrix that can be obtained from I using one elementary row operation. So let's prove this statement. You'll see the, the proof is fairly straightforward. Um, let's start with a simple premise, which is let E be an n by n elementary matrix. So I want to prove this um, for any size elementary matrix. And whenever you start a proof, it's always a good habit to state clearly what it is that you want to show. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, I want to show that E inverse exists, right? That's what it means to show that E is uh, invertible. So that E inverse exists and that E inverse is an elementary matrix. Elementary matrix. Let me put that in there. Okay, that's what I want to show. And to do that, let's just introduce a little bit of notation and terminology. So since E is an elementary matrix, we know it was obtained from I using one operation. So let's give that operation a name. Let's call it, let's say, capital O. So capital O, let it be the ERO, or the elementary row operation. So I'll use the abbreviation ERO from now on so that I don't have to rewrite that every time. So let O be the elementary row operation used to obtain, to obtain E. Okay. In other words, uh, if I have I and I apply capital O to it, I obtain the matrix E. Now we saw in the previous section that any elementary row operation also has an inverse operation. Right? So let's give that a name also. Let's call that inverse operation. Let's call it O inverse. And so this will be, let O inverse be the inverse, inverse elementary row operation. But what does that mean? It, well, it's the inverse elementary row operation means that it, it, it's the operation that restores uh, that right, that restores or returns E back to I. Make sense? In other words, uh, if I apply O inverse to E, I obtain I. Okay? Um, but O inverse is an elementary operation, and therefore there is an associated elementary matrix, right? If there's a matrix associated to that operation, so let's give that matrix a name. Let's call it F. So let F be the elementary matrix matrix uh, associated associated to the operation O inverse. In other words, what we mean is that if you start from I and you apply the operation O inverse, you're going to obtain a matrix, and an elementary matrix, and we're naming that matrix F. We're giving it the name F. But I contend that basically with these three statements, we're almost done the proof. And let's, let me see if I can convince you of, the fa of this fact. So I'm going, to say, I'm going to state this. I'm going to say, if I take the matrix E and I left multiply it by F, what do I obtain? Do you see it? Well, if we go back up here, you notice that if you, if you apply O inverse to E, O inverse to E, you obtain the matrix I, right? But applying O inverse to E, isn't that the same thing as simply left multiplying E by F? Right? Because F is the matrix that corresponds to O inverse. So remember we saw in the previous section that applying an operation directly to a matrix or left multiplying it by the corresponding elementary matrix, that gives the same result. In other words, this will give I, right? And so if F times E is I, well then by definition, F is the inverse of E. And that's the entire proof, right? Because we've just proven uh, that F E inverse exists, and therefore E is invertible, right? Here it is. And remember, F was an elementary matrix to begin with. We defined it that way. So we've proven both parts of the statement that I wrote up here. We've proven that E inverse exists and that E inverse is an elementary matrix, right? Um, and so that's it. That's the proof. In three statements, a little bit of terminology, uh, we've proven that every elementary matrix is invertible and its inverse is also an elementary matrix. And you notice the proof also gives us a method to find the inverse of an elementary matrix. Let's apply that in this example right away. So in this example, we have a matrix, an elementary matrix that was obtained with the operation row 3 plus 3 row 2 becomes row 3. In other words, what we're saying is that if I take the matrix I and I apply row 3 plus 3 row 2 to obtain the new row 3, that gives me the matrix E, right? The matrix E that's written up there. 
And of course, that means that I can also reverse the process. If I want to go to, from E back to I, then I need the inverse elementary operation. And that, I think, is easy to see. That is going to be row 3 minus 3 row 2. Remember, we went over the inverse elementary operations. In other words, in the notation of the proof above, if this was O, then this is O inverse, right? Which means that I can use now O inverse to obtain F. And so if I start from the identity matrix, which will be the, the 3 by 3, 0, 0, 1, and I apply O inverse, which is row 3 minus 3 row 2, becomes a new row 3, well, that matrix that I, I obtain, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, minus 3, 1, this new matrix, this is the matrix F that I was looking for. But F, as we saw in the proof, is, in fact, the inverse of E. And so we can conclude that E inverse is equal to the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, minus 3, 1. And that's the inverse we were looking for. And then if you notice in the uh, question, they tell us to uh, check directly from the definition of the inverse. So in order to check, I'll write that here, what they're asking us to do is to multiply. Is to say, well, if we claim that that's the inverse, then matrix E, 0, 3, 1, times this matrix that we've obtained that we claim is the inverse. So I'll call it E inverse. You can call it F. Um, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, minus 3, 1. In fact, I think it's actually a better idea to call it F. It doesn't matter, but since we're, we're trying to confirm that it is indeed the inverse, and so if you carry out the multiplication, row times column, 1, 0, 0, second row times each column, 0, 1, 0, and finally third row times each column will give us uh, 0, 3, minus 3, uh, it's hard to see, but this is a minus here, so minus 3 is 0, and the last row times last column will be 1, which is the identity matrix, and that's what we wanted to check. And that concludes the example, and it concludes this video.